Good morning, everyone. It's good to be here today. We're from Western Sydney University, and today we're going to be talking about how we have learned to see the agency we've had as students in this work of partnership. Just for a bit of context, we're a team of student partners from Western Sydney University. We work alongside staff to address educational challenges. And uh, over the last seven years, which is a long time we've been doing this work, 50, over 50 students have come through. Students from different degrees, disciplines, postgrad, undergrad, PhD students. We're an odd bunch, a diverse bunch. And I guess the one thing that brings us together is an acknowledgement that things could be better in the university. And that is a picture of our team as of June. 2024. My name is Samuel Suresh. I was a student partner at Western for three years um, and I enjoyed the role so much that I continued in a part-time capacity as a professional staff member beyond that. And today I'm joined by three of our newest additions to the team, um, Edda, Shri and Chris, who've been in this work for four to five months. And it's always interesting to see what it's like as someone who's been in the space for quite a while. It's always interesting to see the shift students make from being students in the classroom to being student partners alongside staff and the insights and the agency that comes along with that. And so you're going to hear from our team today in the process. But before I get into that, I'd love to give you all a quick history of the student staff partnership work at Western. Back in 2017, we had this really big project at Western Sydney that was designed in response to a disruption that was in the future of work in society. And our senior leader at the time, uh, Professor Simon Barry, acknowledged that in order to address this challenge, we had to keep students at the center of the process, beyond just listening to their feedback, but having students in the room as partners and co-creators in that process. And so the ideation of what the solution was to that question of what do our future graduates need to be, had students ideating alongside staff for the first couple of years. And... Um, Eventually, I mean, that's sort of how Student Staff Partnership was born at Western. And eventually what we had was five teams of staff and students working together in partnership to create transdisciplinary curriculum. So our work was grounded originally in curriculum. In 2022, we released 15 transdisciplinary minors and some short courses into the university community. Um, and students were at the center of that process. And students weren't just involved in the co-design and co-creation of the curriculum. Students were also involved in the communication of that curriculum to other students in the student community. And so we launched this marketing campaign um, and it was our own students who were involved in working alongside staff to develop assets, to go on campus and talk about this curriculum to staff. And I think that just gives you a glimpse into one aspect of the student staff partnership work we've been doing at Western, which is co creating curriculum. Alongside co-creating curriculum, we've also led initiatives in the university, particularly to scale up this work and get more staff and students involved. We're also involved in co-researching. We read about um, student staff partner research, research in higher education. We give presentations on our work. Um, we publish papers because we think it's important to have our thinking be constantly challenged by the thinking of others and to also get feedback on what we're doing. Um, and so, I think as a result, the quality of our work is always being pushed um, to be better. And finally, and I'm going to touch on this in a bit, we've also been involved in helping the university address engagement issues in its learning and teaching. And so that's quite a bit we've been doing over the last couple of years. And if you were to ask me to sort of articulate the why, what's the why behind it? What's the most inspirational part of the work? I think it's hearing stories of transformation from staff and students that are involved. When we heard a staff member of ours talk about how working with students as partners in this way was one of the best experiences they had in 10 to 12 years of direct of developing curriculum in the university and how it reinvigorated a passion in them. We hear students leave with stories about how becoming a student partner changes them and opens their eyes up to a whole new side of the university that they never knew existed. And so, you can imagine that when we saw the theme of agents in tra of transformation, it got us pretty excited because transformation is at the heart of what we do, whether that be the impact our work has in the university, whether that be the growth for the students themselves, or um, even as we heard in the keynote this morning, those students themselves going on to inspire other students. And agents, because I love the idea of agency, the idea of not just letting the university or the world or life happen to you, 
but being an active agent in your context. And what I'd love to do is just explore how partnership provides us with a different path to agency than what I think students originally think about. There's this model of student staff interactions that Student Voice um, Australasia released a while back, and it's been really helpful in conceptualizing ways students and staff interact with each other. We have staff informing students, staff consulting students, and then decisions are made without students in the room. We have staff involving students, so come generate ideas, work with us. We have partner with students, so that's sort of the co-design element. And we also have control. And I remember coming into this work as a student. If you ask me where does the most agency lie, for me, it was in control. It was having a seat at the table, being given the microphone and having my problems heard, being given an opportunity to lead an initiative. But what we'd like to explore today is that there's something about working in partnership that opens up a different kind of agency for students that I don't think they realize they already have. And so one thing I'd like to draw is partnership is more than just having staff and students working together in the room. And I would like to invo invite one of our newest student partners, Edda, to come onto the stage and talk to us about what makes partnership different. Hi everyone, my name's Edda and I've been a student partner for the past five months. Um, today I'd like to share some of my perspective um, as someone who's recently joined this space um, by exploring how my experiences in a traditional classroom compared to my experiences working in partnership um, and highlighting the key differences that stand out to me. So picture yourself in a typical classroom setting. We're seated in chairs and the teacher is out the front in front of the classroom presenting information and we all listen. Now there's a sense of secondhand awkwardness when the teacher asks a question and nobody puts their hand up to answer. And I think it's because we are just so scared of being wrong. Um, so we choose not to answer. And I've been there too, where I'd have the answer in my head, but I, I'd be afraid of answering in the case that my answer is wrong. And I find it ironic how nobody wants to talk to each other. And because it's weird because we've all chosen to be there. Well, most of us have. In our workplace, however, the staff member is alongside us rather than in front of the classroom and is committed to our partnership. So our workplace has a culture where people aren't afraid of being wrong and are open to dis discussion about different ideas. Whereas in class, I think people are afraid of being wrong and of how they are perceived by others. In the work we do, people want to talk to each other. In class, people don't want to be there. And the biggest difference to me is that in this workplace, everyone who is in the room has chosen to show up and be there out of their own will. So as someone who's going between both spaces, um, it's made me wonder why. Why do students relate differently to each other and staff in the workplace than in the classroom? I think it's three things. First, a shift from us versus them to we together. In traditional classrooms, there's often an us versus them mentality where students view the teacher as an authority figure, which creates a barrier to engagement. In contrast, the partnership environment fosters collaboration with staff and students working as equals and valuing each other um, and each other's contributions. Um, everyone's input is valued and the focus is on working together. Secondly, students are seen as subjects and as people who have the agency and the ability to explore complex, complex university as opposed to objects who do as they're told. Thirdly, it's an environment where the questions are more important than the answers. In classrooms, the focus is on, on you, is usually on providing the right answers, which can discourage deeper thinking and curiosity, as students may fear being wrong or asking too many questions. Conversely, partnership values questions as key to sparking meaningful discussions and exploring new ideas, promoting a richer and more collaborative working environment. To conclude, working in partnership provides a clear view of the agency we have in collaborating with staff rather than working against them. This experience shifts our perspective on control from a goal to a collaborative effort. It makes me wonder, what if we were brought to what if we brought this culture of trust, honesty, and reciproc 
reciprocity into our classrooms. Imagine the possibilities if we infuse these values into our everyday learning environments. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what I love about that is it paints a picture of what partnership is beyond just having student staff in the room. It, it adds more color to the idea of co-design. And for me, if there was a sentence that encapsulates all of that, it's the idea that partnership is a decision. It's a decision that staff and students can make. And part of making that decision is you've got to be aware that it's an alternative, a different way of interacting with each other. There's a whole lot of shifts that we've brainstormed. A shift from not just extracting information from students, rather co-inquiring alongside them. A, a shift from transaction or expanding beyond the transaction of being a customer to something more relational and, and partnering with staff. You could almost put at the very bottom a shift from acting with low agency to a shift to high agency. Our work in 2024 has primarily been around dealing with the challenge of disengagement. The student feedback data at our university has pointed to it. Staff are talking about it. I'm sure it's not just an issue at Western Sydney University. And so it's quite the thing to solve. And it's quite the thing to solve because it's complex. There are elements that involve the teacher, teaching staff. There are elements that involve your students. And then there are just some harsh realities with the context you're in. And I think often when we go about solving this problem, we tend to focus on one. And I think one of the commitments to a partnership approach is to embrace the complexity that comes with all of them. At the start of the year, one of our senior leaders gave us this brief, create a resource that can be distributed to teaching staff in schools that gives them some practical tips on how they can better engage students from a student's point of view. And please title it Five Moments That Matter. How do you go addressing a challenge like this? And, and there are multiple options. One way is to just hand the brief over to educational advisors. After all, they've read the research, they're experts in their field, and ask them to give us the best of what they've got. Another thing you can do is give it to students. Give students a seat at the table and give them the microphone and get a first-hand customer point of view as to what learning should be. What we did was a mix of all of them. When we were ideating, we had the student feedback, we had staff in the room, we had student partners in the room that sort of took that data and had and brought a bit of life to it because real people are in the room. We had the teaching and learning research over the last couple of decades. We had educational advisors. We had some communication expertise in the room. And as wonderful as it is to have all these perspectives on the table, one of the challenges that arises is you get contradictory views. And that's just within students. But even then, when students and staff are interacting with each other, you'll have staff members saying things like, if you just get your learning outcomes right and the alignment of, of those right across your program and subject and assessment, that's what that's what leads to good learning. That's what helps students see um, what's happening with the subject. And then you have a student who says, you can get all that right, but what if my teacher can't speak properly? And you're like, how do, how do you deal with the contradiction that arises there? And one of the things that we've acknowledged is learning to sit with it and learning to interact with each other and listen to each other in those moments of frustration. And I'm going to invite my colleague Shri to come and talk about what that process has been like for her and some of the realisations she's made along the way. Amazing. Thank you, Samuel. Hi, everyone. I'm Shri. I'm a Bachelor of Laws and Bachelor of Business student, and I've been in the partnership space for around five months now. And when I first started as a student partner, I honestly wasn't sure what to expect. I thought it'd be a chance to, you know, have a rant about what was like wrong in the university, get things off my chest and, you know, maybe shake things up a little bit. And I think that's the case for a lot of students. When you have the opportunity to participate, you want to voice all the frustrations you have and make sure that you're heard. And I remember during our induction session and we talked about different scenarios that we might run into as a student partner. And one example really stood out to me. So I'm going to paint that picture for you. So just imagine this. You're an art student. You're passionate about social justice and sustainability. And you bring this perspective to all the discussions you have. Then you start working with a data science professor. And in a new module, when you're discussing with him, he talks about algorithms and statistics. And you, you ask him and you suggest incorporating some ideas about social justice. And that's something that you've been studying for a really long time. So you're very passionate about it. But then the professor responds saying, you should just keep those ideas in your arts degree. This module is about data. And hearing this example was a bit of a shocker. And it made me realize how often we face resistance when we're trying to blend so many different perspectives together. 
But then my boss asked me following this discussion, she was like, have you asked yourself why? And why does the professor think this way? And I think that's when I made the shift. Curiosity is a much better response in a moment of disagreement. And in fact, it's a choice. And instead of just reacting, and it's about choosing to be curious and explore the why behind the viewpoint. Curiosity also helps us expand our view about the university beyond just the limited experience of what we get in the classroom and through our assessments. It helps us see the bigger picture about what's going on in the university. It's only recently that I started realizing that academic professors, teaching is only one of the three things that they actually do. And they aren't even professionally trained to be teachers a lot of the time. And understanding this changed how I approach things in my workspace. And it can be frustrating when you encounter these realities, but it shifted my perspective overall. And when I speak up and I make a contribution, what I'm saying is more generous, it's more informed, and it's more likely to resonate with staff. And this shift has given me confidence and in turn, it gives us the confidence to help drive change in our workplace and in our university lives. And curiosity hasn't just been a tool, it's what's made me a more active agent of change. But curiosity has also helped us and let, let me let go of the fear of being wrong. You know, it's like a muscle that gets stronger with every time we use it. And by staying curious, I've learned to take risks and share my ideas, even when I'm unsure of it. Our weekly reading group is a really great example of how I've kind of exercised this. And we discuss literature on student staff partnership. And at first I was a little bit hesitant to share my thoughts. I was around all these extremely smart people and I was afraid to get it wrong. But over time, curiosity pushed me to take those risks. And it showed me that by sharing my perspective, even if it was wrong, it wasn't educated, it could contribute in a collaborative and creative process. But there's something about working in partnership that pushes students to see that they have agency in a very unique way. And I wonder what that would look like if we brought that into the classroom. Sure. I, I love I love how you shown us curiosity can be a choice. In that moment of disagreement, we can choose to be curious. Um, if there's an idea that sort of sums up the way we approach our work, I think it's reciprocal curiosity. We have five more, but we won't dive into those today. But I think it's curiosity and that reciprocal respect we have for each other that allows us to deal with the contradiction that comes out of this. And ultimately what we ended up producing was a document and a series of workshops under the title of Five Moments That Matter that we honestly think came forward with a vision of what engagement looked like that we could all agree upon. Um, and just to give you a glimpse into it, we categorized them into five moments. I'll run through them really quickly. The first moment is about starting with inspiration as opposed to starting your semester with a contract, telling students what the assessments are. The second moment is about acknowledging that students have it, Students have to make the decision to own their learning. And it's important that staff set that expectation and support them into making that decision. The third moment is the, the encounter that students and staff make in the classroom and how bringing the learning to life is a really important thing and how staff could do that. Moment four is about demystifying assessment and helping students see that assessment isn't just this monster that's at the end of semester. It's a thing that drives learning. And if only they could see that, maybe they would get more out of it as well. Moment five is about ending with reflection. The five moments are all interconnected. And I think what they've been really good for is starting a conversation with schools, staff across various faculty and ask, helping us ask ourselves what, what's, what's getting in between where we are and some things that are really at the heart of what makes teaching and learning really important. And so I think we've, we thoroughly enjoyed this process. I'm gonna invite Chris to talk a bit about a student who in particular was involved in moment two. Could you talk to us about how being involved in this work has changed your view on agency? Good morning, everyone. I wanna to talk to you about the importance of agency and community. Agency isn't something that you have. It can't be given to you. Agency is the choice to act. It completely changes the dynamic of the community within the classroom when each individual student chooses to utilize it. But foremost, I want to say though, I've chronically struggled with procrastination throughout my life. I think that everyone does to a degree, but I've had this sort of thing where you couldn't get me to respect a deadline unless something might actually die. My coworkers can testify to that. I'm portraying this to you in a sort of quirky way, but I actually don't have enough time here today to list off even a small portion of moments in my life where it's impacted me. I often look back wondering what could have happened if I'd acted sooner. 
My greatest vulnerability to nobody's surprise when moving through life with this mindset was, of course, my education. Convincing myself to break this habit and commit every day to be completely responsible for my own learning was at first a, an absurd experience. It felt like an exercise in futility, but soon it became apparent through the grades I, would be, I began to achieve that this was a non-optional. I always assumed that being a high-performing student was somewhat paradoxical. The best and brightest to me just always seemed to be that way. Were the qualities that one requires to succeed academically inherent to one's character? Is it something that you're born with? No. And actually, I've come to understand that one specific trait encompasses much of the behaviors that a student requires to excel, and anyone can access it. However, you're not born with it. It won't come easily, or it won't come at all. I'm talking about agency, the practice of effect effectively ushering one's intention to action. While I strongly support the idea that one is largely, largely responsible for pursuing one's own agency, the importance of a community environment such as that, that is in an, an engaged classroom, and it's and a negative effect that can overcome an, an individual student when it's absent demands a renewed focus. It takes a great deal of grit and self-motivation to commit, and even and an even great and an even greater deal to put yourself forward among your peers to take responsibility for your own learning together as a community. Agency is not insular. I've personally felt disengaged from my studies in times where I was distant from my classmates. But why the spotlight on agency, and why is it so important in the classroom? The way that we teach and learn is changing rapidly. We are past declaring a paradigm shift in tertiary education. Our students will need to self-direct, take initiative, and pursue our own education more so than ever before. Owning your learning and by practicing agency and empowering each other inside and out of the classroom to do so might be the most important responsibility placed on students when fostering engagement. Owning your... Oh, sorry. Acknowledging and enacting, and enacting agency is a decision I still choose to make every day. It's one that sometimes I feel I don't fully understand still, but it's one that I endeavor to continue making and even in spite of imperfect circumstances. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. There's a lot of ideas there and I'm trying to think on a good one or a provocation to end on. Um, but just to summarize, Edda put forward the idea that partnership's a decision. And all those shifts sort of add color to what that decision is. It looks like a lot of things when enacted. And one of those things it looks like is curiosity and curiosity is a choice. And to make a decision to be in that kind of way, it's difficult to do it once is a thing to do it again and again and again, when you don't feel like it, that's challenging. And what helps you do that is doing it alongside others. And so doing that in a community of people helps you act with agency. And I think that's what the student staff partnership context has given our student partner team. One of the harsh realities is going from that context to the classroom every week and seeing all the same ingredients there, students, staff, common purpose. And yet for some reason that falls flat. And I'm trying to figure out why. And for some reason in this context here, people see possibility for change, for contribution, for their own agency. And for some reason, this other element, they don't. And I think that's a good, good question to leave on. What's the difference? And does your context help the people in it see the possibility of what a university could be, um, the possibility for the agency students and staff have when they work with each other? Thank you very much. I think we went a bit over time. Do we have time for a question? Cool. I'm going to do right now I'm going to throw to my boss who's really good at answering these questions this is associate professor type statement thanks for question um I would say that our team um has a very strong commitment to the students and their learners and that we help us 
wake into those things that need to grow and then have a chance to go to that. And so I would say that not all of the partnership work that we do is about all of those things. There are other things we don't want to get the best of about. This is about something. And so we don't try to make this be everything in the universe. We try to make it do the specific thing that we we try to put together and some cases it works and some cases. And you can say as you've been watching that I think the idea that partnership has the weight of everything is a problem for partnership and it's a problem for the other things that we set up in the universe. So yeah, so my answer is we don't do all those things anymore. Any one more question? Thank you for your presentation. Can you think you'd speak to the very sort of thing that's been recording the stuff that was happening for a few days? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And also, how do you foresee the impact of this really interesting intervention being with students? Is that also going to be a very. Yeah. 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 One of the things that was raised this morning was the idea of success before you start any piece of work getting people in the room to articulate what success looks like is important and one of the things we try and do is at the start of a piece of work let's say it's about engagement getting everyone in the room and having a conversation are they the most enjoyable conversations sometimes they feel incredibly unproductive because there's a lot of voices but i think showing up and realizing it's important that we hear the different views as to what success looks like so that when we do build a vision for a piece of work, it isn't just unidimensional, but it incorporates those different views and has the space for those discussions. Um, for this piece of work and even the previous piece of work, it's an ideation session. Um, and that's even before we've agreed upon the plan of work going forward. So having the ideation session, agreeing upon how, how you want to do things and being like, okay, we, now that we've just, this is what success looks like. This is sort of where we want to go. What are things that we can create to help us go there? Whether that's workshops, whether that's a resource, whether that's something else, always bearing in mind, it's not just about running the workshop and having people show up. That means success. It isn't just about making a pretty resource and people saying nice things about it. It's actually looking at how does that suite of things go on to have impact in the uni? One of the most challenging things to do we've realized is finding good measures of success. It's easy to count the number of people that show up to your workshop. Um, it's easy to measure the things that are easy to measure. Um, and I'd say it is a thing we are constantly wrestling with to actually know other, other things we are measuring for impact, the right things. Um, and I guess the first step to that is having a conversation about that too. And your final question? Cool. Yeah. Um, Shreem states, particularly from in the moment of curiosity, I think it's really essential to be keeping that relationship from transactional to relational interaction. How do you think we can underpin a culture of curiosity in our relationship? Is it just about seeing different things through this or what yeah, what are you done and what you think that yeah it's been pretty much I mean one thing I mentioned was that it's muscle that you put with everything. Yeah. And I think every day spending this work, I learn more about how I can do this. I must mention them as much as I mention that, you know, in, in saying why it's happening. And I think it's really easy for students to not be curious because we only get one perspective, you know, and we think about ourselves, what is the other person doing, what other people are happening. And I think that when I learned this in partnership space, it also bring it into my university classroom and you know, talk about it to my friends and my, my circle of people that I know and feel that way when you go to university. You ask your, your tutors that. Oh, like, you know, why, why is this the case? What do you think of the impact on this? And you bring that more generous approach. You don't just yell at them, you don't just send them a you know, tasty email about why you hate this. Um, and I think that, you know, just working in that space and about being ready, and I think that's a good way that I see my friends do it as well. We've been in that relationship and the way that you forge it that way. So I think that's probably the first thing. Look forward to doing it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate it. I was just told by someone who picked their heads with the door that I need to wrap up. So uh, next session starts at 11. Thank you all.